Uh, hola. Um, sorry, that's about all I know about Spanish. Um, I'm very happy to be here and want to take a moment to thank Simona and everybody who is participating to this fantastic organization and energy that is going on here. I'm particularly happy to be here because of what is happening with the 15M movement and all that started here in the streets. That is, I think, a very, very important and meaningful movement and I will get back to that. Um, the point I will be making here is m maybe very familiar to most of you. My point is that the infrastructure for the future of our societies is the internet. You know that. This infrastructure that is the also the infrastructure for your social movement and for some global movement to come is the internet. And that's, yeah, that's obvious to say that. But at some point we have to, to ask ourselves, what is this internet? What is its very nature? What makes this internet be such a perfect tool for what we want to do and for, for how we want to change society? So, what is the nature of this infrastructure and why it is under attack today? And what can we do as citizens to try to protect it? Well, the internet is great because it's universal. The universality of the internet is its core, fundamental characteristics. What I mean by universality is that whether you're in Granada or in Canada or in Guatemala or in Guadalajara or or anywhere in the world, you have access to the very same content, service, and application that we call the internet. It is one and only internet for everyone. This is this universality that makes it the platform for expression, for innovation, for experimentation, and for sharing. Given its definition, the internet belongs to everyone. It belongs to us. It doesn't belong to Telefonica or to AT&T or to Cisco. It literally belongs to us as what economists would describe a common good, a common, something that we all share. And so if we all share the ownership of this concept of an infrastructure, it also means that we all share a responsibility towards it, a responsibility to protect it and to keep it like it is today, to keep it universal, open and free. This notion of universality and openness is what we call net neutrality, is the fact that everyone should be granted the right to access any content, service or application on the internet and everyone should have the guarantee to be able to publish some content, service, and application. This is an extremely important debate going on. I don't know how it is going on at this moment in Spain, but in the Netherlands, in Belgium, and in France, we are having at the moment vibrant debate about it. And it's indeed on the European level that something should be done. We think that there should be a law guaranteeing this net neutrality. So when Telefonica says to you, oh, well, now you won't be able to use Skype, or peer-to-peer yeah, -peer will be slowed down, or this website, you know, the pirate thing, nah, it, okay, it won't be accessible. When one operator does this kind of things, we think it should just be illegal. That's, that's one point. So we have a responsibility towards the universality of the internet, towards protecting this net neutrality, it could be done through a law like the one I, I just described, but it's not only that. Given this, this concept of one universal space that belongs to all of us, we have to keep in mind that one restriction 
to internet somewhere is a restriction to the global internet. When one person somewhere in the world has his or her internet connection restricted, it is us, the internet, who is being restricted. So th this, is, this is really already a global concept and a global network. And what we are seeing in the streets here and Plasta here and um, on Times Square is something that begins to resemble to, to a global movement. So a global infrastructure with global movements and people calling for global changes. Well, actually there are global threats to this global infrastructure. And so this is for the not so nice part of what I have to tell you. So far we were in the in the land of the Care Bears, you know, the purple hearts and rainbows and the unicorns and all. But now he here comes here come the bad guys. Restrictions to access. Restrictions can take many forms, but in the end, and actually it took me years to, to work on those issues to get to understand this point, that it is the very same machines that are at the core of the networks, that are at the, the nodes of the networks, that can be programmed in various ways. The machines that are at every node of the network can be programmed, for instance, by China to do its political censorship of the network. They can be programmed by Vodafone to ban BitTorrent or block access to the Pirate Bay. And they can be used so f uh, by, by Vodafone to, to hurt that net neutrality for commercial purposes, like uh, banning Skype in order to sell you minutes of communications. And they can be programmed to restrict your access in the name of copyright. And you, you of course, you all fought against the Sinde law. And um, I feel so close to, to, to this fight because, you know, in France we had the Adopi fight. It was very similar to, to, to what happened here. But now the, the, the people of the copyright uh, are also deploying a global tactics and, and a global strategy. Actually, they, they've been going global before us. They got IFPI, the, the Worldwide Lobby for Recording Industry. MPAA, the, the Motion Picture Association of America, is also global for, for a long time. And you, you've heard of WIPO? You know, the, the branch of WTO that is used to the World Intellectual Property uh, Organization, where those issues are supposed to be debated. Well, f for the last 10 years, WIPO have been stuck because countries of the South, countries of the, the global South, countries like Brazil, India, African countries, Latin American countries, went to WIPO and said, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. For us, sharing means something. Uh, some, some parts of our economics are built on sharing, and you're offering us the model, you know, the, the copyright Taliban model, where everything is protection, enforcement, protection, enforcement. And so countries of the global south went to, uh, to WIPO along the years and say, wait, let's think of something else. Let's not go all the way towards, towards this. So what did the global lobbies of entertainment they said, okay, fuck it. Fuck the global organization that we are supposed to be part of. Let's invent something new. They don't want our thing to get through. Let's invent something new. And so this is the story of ACTA. How many of you have heard about ACTA before? That's, that's quite a lot. That's, hmm. that's impressive. Um, so ACTA stands for the Anti-Counterfeiting Trade Agreement. But as Richard uh, would put it, it's the anti-citizen tyranny agreement. Could, could fit very well. So it's the idea of 39 countries, including the 27 of the European Union. Um, according to the US Trade Representative, it's between like-minded countries, so countries who are agreeing from the start, that will sit on some table, comfortable table, with no public oversight, in secret, for some years, and negotiate together 
what should be copyright enforcement and what should be done with the internet what kind of restriction could be done to the internet in the name of fighting copyright patents and trademarks so I think at this stage ACTA along with the threat on net neutrality done by the operators is one of the biggest threat to our global internet and to the universality of this global internet therefore to our ability to build any kind of global movement to go a little bit into the detail of the um, of the process and of the text the the acta has been negotiated for three years and have been finalized so the text of acta is final now it will be presented in front of the european parliament in the next month it will probably be early 2012 it cannot be earlier than january it may be february it may be march or, or later but you'll hear about it and we will all count on your help to get it kicked so this is the most important thing you have to remember about this that we have at this stage one chance of kicking acta out it is in the european parliament we have won tough battles in the european parliament before so this is a battle we can win and when i mean winning it means that winning you know like if we if we participate and if we deploy some energy we can win that so to give you in a nutshell the core reason to oppose acta and why acta will fundamentally hurt the core concept and the core architecture of the internet and why acta is unacceptable per se acta is not only a trade agreement acta contains a part about criminal sanctions yes criminal sanction prison countries have been negotiating prison they've been negotiating criminal sanctions which usually should come in front of parliaments with elected representatives with debates with amendments that kind of things you usually have in a democracy well the acta people just negotiated new criminal sanctions so by itself this is enough to ask for it to be rejected because this is contrary to the way the european union should be functioning so those criminal sanctions they are described in the article 23 say quote no, well no i will start the quote later it says that the the signatory countries of acta should make sure that quote criminal sanctions are available for aiding and abetting infringement on a commercial scale aiding and abetting infringement on a commercial scale and then you ask yourself what is a commercial scale uh -huh. a very good question so far for criminal law there was the notion of intentionality if i can prove that you really wanted to steal this car or handbag you need to prove that you wanted to do it in order to make you guilty that's the intentionality with this notion of a commercial scale you don't even need to look at the individuals all it needs is to be big and you know that on the internet anything can be big the pirate bay is big therefore it's a commercial scale one million people sharing one file it's a commercial scale right so anything big on the internet can fall under it and then is this notion of aiding and abetting oh your telefonica okay i'm let's pretend i'm universal i'm universal and your telefonica hello telefonica those people are accessing the pirate bay the pirate bay is a commercial scale indeed you're aiding and abetting infringement on a commercial scale so what do you prefer i take you to court and i kill you or you take voluntary measures measures to deter further infringement like say i don't know censorship like filtering access to the pirate bay what do you prefer telefonica so acta under the threat of those overly broad criminal sanctions brings private censorship of the internet turns every actor of the internet potentially into a private copyright police and a private copyright judge i mean everyone every 
access provider, every service provider like Google or um, uh, M minus Uno, uh, any service provider also, any hosting provider can fall under this. So I think my 15 minutes are almost over and I hope you will have understood how global of a threat this is to what is probably the, the most precious tool we have between our hands for bringing change to society and making the sharing the norm again. So that's basically the end and I hope that you understand also that everybody can and must participate and that this is the only condition for us in the end to win and that this is the only acceptable option. Thank you. Pues gracias Jeremy, creo que ha sido muy claro, muy didáctico y viene en el punto porque como veis acta es una legislación que muy pronto ya de alguna manera se va a implementar en lo hablaba de enero, febrero, marzo. Es una mañana ágil, pero no tan ágil como para que no haya preguntas. Entonces, vamos a dejar como un cuartito de hora, ahora antes de 10 minutos, 10 minutos, para alguna pregunta. Y Francisco tiene una pregunta. Hi, Jeremy. Well, I could speak in French to you, but uh, for the, the easiest uh, way to... Uh, to and um, for everybody understand, uh, I, I will uh, do it in English. Uh, well, ACTA is one thing, but you know that Americans are already preparing the IP Protect Act that's now transformed to e parasites. So, uh, ACTA will be in some way irrelevant because um, America is still going on its way to implement their own measures that will affect the internet equally even if ACTA is passed or not passed. So what, what can we do? <laughs> uh, if mm, America uh, still go on with uh, their plans to, uh, to make a big firewall on the internet and then can uh, bring down any, any com, any net, any, any DNS, uh, uh, stop bank transactions for uh, websites, uh, mm, really, uh, ACTA, okay, it's important, but ah. they, they, they are following their own planning, independently from ACTA. Um, okay, that's a very good and tough question. First of all, this um, Protect IP Act and the new version that came out from the, the House some days ago is already an implementation of what ACTA will be. So reading the US text and being so scared make you think this is what would become the norm if ACTA is adopted in the EU. Well, actually, it's a bit more than that. It's a mix between ACTA and between what Joe Lieberman and others managed to, to make against Wikileaks by having any kind of private companies, not only internet actors, to do private censorship. So it goes one step beyond ACTA already, but it is in the very same logic of putting enforcement in the hands of corporate actors. So the question on one hand is, what can we do on this side of the Atlantic against it? Well, I truly believe in what some uh, theorized as the, the boomerang effect, that something happening on one side of the world can have an effect on the other side of the world. Actually, and we'll hear about the, the Senate in Mexico, when the Senate in Mexico said, fuck you, eh, to ACTA. <laughs> that, huh? Well, this can have an impact on the European Parliament if we manage to, to use that properly. So, I believe that our political actions here can have an impact on the way civil society reacts in the US. And you, you, you have an idea that the Occupy Wall Street thing didn't come totally out of the blue. It was inspired by, by what is going on here and what is going on in the Arab countries uh, and so on. So we can have some global impact with our action to some extent, and we need uh, the, the same way the US people to be able to have an impact on the EU debate on ACTA. But beyond that, just consider your question uh, reversed. 
If we kick ACTA out, what impact could it have on the US debate? If we kick ACTA out, this is the biggest symbol in the field of copyright we can build onto. This is the biggest, bigger than the software patents fight, bigger than the Cinde, the Adopi, and all this together, bigger than the hijacking of the telecoms package. If we manage to kick that out with a clear message, don't mess with our fucking internet, then the door will be open to promote a positive agenda to the EU institutions. Then the revision of the IPRED directive won't be about blind enforcement and more criminal sanction. Then we can talk again about exceptions and about the, the right to share. And this, I think, will inevitably have an impact on the debate, even in the US. Jose Luis. Hi, Jeremy. Uh, I actually wanted to ask you not about ACTA, uh, so forgive me, this is a bit off topic, but about Adobe. which is one day pass and mostly fail. Uh, so our interpretation from here is that Adobe has a mostly changed the status quo of things in the end in France. So I wanted to maybe if you could elaborate a little bit on that. Also because in a way the, the failure of Adobe is the failure of that wave of legislation, the three strikes law or the the law here. And actually I, I agree that probably the, the next intervention goes to the level of infrastructure, which is something that happens not only with ACTA, but with other kinds of, and the promotion of world gardens, which are all over the place. But I think it would be nice if you could give us a, a contextualized interpretation of the landscape after Adopi in France. Um, okay, a, a short answer in the form of a troll would stand in two words, epic, fail. Um, but for a longer detailed answer, well, it's been a failure because, well, for 12 million euros a year, all they did so far is sending 600,000 uh, emails and nobody was got to a court, nobody was disconnected. So the, the private uh, police of the copyright mafia uh, signaled 22 million infringement and 10 people will soon be o heard by the Adopi to maybe got in front of a court and maybe blah blah blah. So, 22 millions means the infringement is, what they call infringement, is pervasive. And so if you look at the figures, you think it's okay. But in the end, the whole Adopi is an intimidation campaign. You know, it's like bullying. And you, oh, you're doing something wrong. Stop. And they think it will work and make people buy more. That's their, their bet. But actually what we see in France, and we didn't think of that, we think of every possible scenario. We, we, we thought that we did so much on the political level that it would be risible and people would have fun of it. But in practice, when people receive these emails, many of them are afraid. And what we see in France is a decrease of the use of peer-to-peer -peer networks. People still access digital works, but they stop public file sharing. People go massively to direct download websites and they go massively to streaming websites. The impact of it is terrible for the network. Peer-to-peer -peer is like green technology. It's clean. You have resources that you pay for and you share them with everyone. If a hundred people are on the same network, on the same ISP as yours, the connections will remain on the network. That's cheap. That's efficient. If 100 people want to all go to Mega Upload, it's outbound connection that go to Hong Kong. That's transit. That's expensive communications. And that's, in the end, a massively centralized architecture that costs shitloads of money. Therefore, they make you pay. And they make you pay with tax evasion. So you, you generate behaviors of corporations, uh, well, basically structured like mafias that pollute the network instead of the green technology. And this is a direct effect of Adopi. So I think this is really a, a message we need to, to get through. Sharing is good on, on a moral, on an ethical, on an economical perspective, but also on a technical perspective of the networks. The use of peer-to-peer -peer protocols should in any case be promoted 
over those stupid streaming and direct download website. And in, in that regard, Adopi really, really doesn't help. But I share your, your view that um, I, I usually don't even take so long to talk about it because I think it's so much a thing of the past already. Adopi is prehistory. What matters now is that th they stopped going on one people after the other and doing the infringement on the level of people. ACTA is already the graduated response 2.0, where they stop going after the people, but go after the intermediaries that will go after the people. This is even more dangerous, and we're, we're there right now. Una última pregunta? No? Si. Sí. 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 <laughs> Bueno, pues nada, agradecer a, a Jeremy y un aplauso. <risa>